This had just happened at the end of the Faulkner focus, and so now we're learning more breaking news. Ottawa's police chief resigning today amid criticism of his inaction against the Freedom Convoy. Critics are accusing Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of bringing martial law to Canada as he invokes never-before-used emergency powers to crack down on Freedom Convoy protesters. Under the Emergencies Act, the government is introducing measures that aim to cut off the protesters, cut them off from their money, all the funding. That would include crowdfunding platforms being used to support the blockade. However, the Canadian Civil Liberties Union, uh, Association says the government has not met the standard for invoking the Emergencies Act. And at least four Canadian premiers, the equivalent of state governors, you could say, call the plan a dangerous overreach. Canada's Minister of Public Safety, however, is defending this extraordinary measure. It is not just an inconvenience. Uh, it is not uh, simply a matter of um, a trivial uh, interruption. Uh, we've seen in intimidation, harassment, um, and expressions of hate. And at times, um, the scenes on the streets of Wellington have seemed um, completely lawless. All right, I want to start again with the breaking news and work our way forward. Kaylee, it is significant that this Ottawa police chief has said he's not going to take action against breaking up that blockade. Look, the prime minister had the opening salvo. You want to talk all big and bad and say, well, I'm not bringing in the military just yet. You want to do all that? Then let all your local people sit down, all your LEOs sit down, and you take over and see how popular that makes you around the world. Yeah, it, that's an extraordinary development that happened at the last hour of your show. I mean, when you have law enforcement saying, essentially, this is government overreach, where I'm resigning in protest, they're exactly right. This Emergencies Act is only supposed to be invoked if there is a threat to the sovereignty of the Canadian government. So you're telling me these peaceful trucks who are opposing government overreach, surrounded by kids and, you know, very family-oriented affairs. That's a threat to the sovereignty of the government of Canada? I don't think so, Justin Trudeau. I don't think so. Um, but what's amazing, they're protesting government overreach. So elitist Justin Trudeau says, what's right? the answer? More government, <laughs> government overreach. overreach. Like, how I, does that even make sense? I, I know. That is so... <laughs> it's, it's ironic that you say that, too. Because not only are they protesting government overreach, but he's not listening to what they're saying at all. So he throws in the one bit of stuff that not only is overreach, but it, it, it doesn't match the situation. So what is his goal here, right? Because 90% of the, the truckers union is vaccinated. What is his goal? Like, what is the mandate even about? I, yeah, I don't even I understand the that. The goal That's is control. It. I think it's part of our ongoing conversation we've been having about as the, the rise of the proletariat nation here, the, the workers coming together, the, the blue collar, reasonable, rational, everyday American that works to put food on their table, that is rising up because the governments in charge are being even more bloated with their control. And the second it's questioned, the second it's pushed back, they respond with more control, more down. mandates. This is the first time, as you said, in Canadian history they have invoked this. This emergency powers, as you said, is reserved for when it's threatening the sovereignty of Canada and when it exceeds the scope of the ability for the provinces to handle it. So you're telling me that World War II, that all of the calamities Canada has, has undergone in its history, none of the, they all pale in comparison to truckers protesting their freedoms. And meanwhile, as you pointed out, the prime minister refused to meet with them. He's never heard from their yeah, lips what they want, that. but he, he took a knee at the Black Lives Matter protest to the scoffing of his community as well, who said, this is just performative. Like, you, you've, not, you've not engaged in one policy that will help in that department, too. So all this guy does is tighten the reins on his people and then engage in performative actions. You know what really stands out to me, too, Jason, is how, and, and Kaylee hit the nail on the head with this, too, how peaceful the protests have been. In fact, they wanted to honk their horns, which is something that truckers do when they go down the road. And it's yes. <laughs> kind of cool in the summertime. You got your windows down. It's like, oh, I got a honk from a trucker. Whatever. <laughs> they don't even want to hear that. And they're arresting people who honk their horns back. Remember the great grandfather, mm -hmm. right? 78 year old man, they arrested him in Canada because he was honking his little horn back to say, hey, I support you guys. But what really stands out here to me, Jason, is there is no respect for dissent in a democracy. What do we call that kind of government? Yeah, this is nothing short of martial law. And Harris, to your point, 
Why hasn't Justin Trudeau sat down with some of the truckers in here, heard out their grievances? I, I think they're reflective of what a lot of Canadians and, quite frankly, Americans are feeling about these mandates. They're not against getting vaccinated. Parents? They're against School the mandate board? to Masking? have to get vaccinated. You mean that sort of thing? Vac yeah, it, have that sort of discussion. And it's really interesting. The New York Times is even, editorial board has even come out against what Trudeau's doing. They pointed out a, a good point that I didn't know that Trudeau supported these types of blockades in India. He was totally mm -hmm. fine with oh. it if it was in another country. But now that it's happening in his own backyard, where does this end for him? Where does this end for him? He doesn't have an end point here, and he's going to lose the support of the Canadians. And hey, to our friends to the north, you're the one that put him in power. If you want to see a change, you got to get rid of him. Wow. Former chairman of the Oversight Committee coming through with some extra facts. Yes, always. Right? <laughs> uh, Leslie, your thoughts. Thank you. I'm glad you got to me in time. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. I know it's a surprise. I'm going to disagree with all of you, and this is why. Justin Trudeau has a responsibility to his nation, a responsibility to the people. The people in Ottawa that I have spoken to truckers. are afraid. Their security is threatened. Their economy is threatened. Security? Our economy is being affected by this guy. And so, speaking of economy, 50% of the financing for this is coming from the United States. And Leslie, we have Americans the going there now. From? Remember, our First, where, amend our first Amendment this does not carry over protest. to Canada. Why are they afraid? Yeah, it's not like afraid. people are burning down cities excuse like me, we saw excuse in the summer me. The of 2020. Police, the police have said there is a special hotline for hate crimes in right now in that province wow. specifically because of this. But there the are businesses existence of that, that doesn't mean it's being utilized. And in they, are, they are frightened have reported by these that there individuals. Isn't a white they are frightened by these individuals. At all there. They are frightened by these individuals, and in addition to that, the majority, overwhelming majority of Canadians back with the government, uh, what the government has done in Canada with regard to COVID, the mandates, the vaccinations. Harris pointed out rightly so, 90% of these truckers um, are in fact vaccinated. That has and nothing remember, to do with their position bridge on the mandates. Doesn't ju isn't mm -hmm. just about them, it's also blocking business to the United States as well, and that hurts us and our supply chain. You know what, with just a few seconds, I, I, I want everybody to hear what Emily just said, because your mm -hmm. questions were very important, and, and Leslie, I, I didn't know if you could hear her, but I want you to hear her. And I can't, I can't when you're all talking, I'm talking. So tell me again about that hotline. Number one, the existence of the hotline is not any evidence that it's being utilized. Embedded reporters with those truckers reported then that there was actually an absolute absence of any type of white supremacy or nationalism that was occurring there. Number three, the fact that 90% are vaccinated has no bearing on whether how they feel on the mandate. You can be vaccinated and protest and feel strongly against a vaccination mandate. So it's been completely peaceful there. The existence of fear on the, on the part of some people that, that that's not evidence of, that doesn't logically then infer that there isn't a threat. People being afraid are probably because outlets like CNN are stoking yes. them in the mainstream media because the well, reporters the who are there saying that the 911 lines have been clogged by calls peaceful. from the U.S. I didn't hear your question, but we have to go anyway. I mean, do what, what about the, what about the police stating that the 911 calls have uh, sent police to other places and they were false calls coming specifically directly from the United States? Well, what does that have to do with the white supremacy hotline? I mean, you're all over the road with this, but the bottom line is it does not look like the summer of 2020 in this right. country when people were burning things down amid the peaceful protesters. They were, they were, uh, can you imagine you're, you're peacefully protesting, you got your baby in a stroller and, and you're fighting for justice with your words in your heart and people are tearing your city down? We didn't have any kind of a reaction the way that they're having a reaction, not even legally, when we, when we should have. We should have been adjudicating those cases and arresting more of those people who were turning peaceful protests into something else. That's not what's happening in Canada. That is not. And let's not get that twisted.